Paris Supercross. We got a sneak peek of what is going to happen in 2024 AMA Supercross between rivals, teammates, and also brothers, Hunter and Jet. Jet is still the fan favorite. He is still the faster of the brothers. However, Hunter isn't far off. We saw in multiple races him somewhat pushing the issue with his brother. So here we see him look over and go, oh, no, I'm not going to let you pass me on the outside. So he does the older brother thing where I'm just going to pick on you. He slides into the corner, goes wide, stands his brother up, wins the race, and also does the Cooper Webb with an added, uh-uh, ain't going to happen. No gun. And here is a slow-mo of him <laughs> doing just that, which was honestly my favorite moment, and I had to put it in the video just because these guys are brothers. They love each other, but the plot thickens a little bit in the final race and it's obviously jet getting the better half of both of them which unfortunately happens more often than not so in 2024 supercross i honestly kind of want to root for the underdog hunter to take away some of the spotlight from his older brother i think he deserves it and here's into the whoops takes out his brother because he just can't slow down. This was a fast, big set of whoops. And Jet comes in hauling freaking butt. Hits that last whoop. Just stands him up. You only have the front break. So what is he to do? He's just going to run into his brother. And truthfully, running into your brother is what kept him from crashing too. And I got to give it up to them with these tough blocks. These tough blocks are much better than what I've seen in the United States. Motocross and Supercross combined. Even some of the stuff over at World Supercross. This stuff is top tier. And you can see how the berm is literally built on top of the tough blocks it's not like berm built then tough blocks added and then you've got these longer tough blocks as well that are not just four feet long they're like eight feet long which is perfect especially the ones around the whoops so hunter gets the short end of the stick falls down and literally loses a bunch of ground especially potentially winning the race as well so the question is, is this too aggressive or was this just the other brother establishing dominance yet again? You can tell that Jed is just bummed that it's his brother. A subtlety that I noticed was Ken Roxon has a different technique than anybody through the whoops. We have Cooper Webb here with his pointer finger on the clutch just in case something bad was to happen and you needed a little bit extra rope or you needed to help set yourself up for the next corner because you're going in super hard. You need to pull that sucker in to keep the bike from stalling. And notice Kenny, his whole hand is just grabbing on. He's just holding on. Is it holding on for dear life like I have in the background? It's something that you don't normally see. Normally you see some guy with their middle finger, their one finger, two fingers, holding on to that clutch just in case, and we do not see Kenny. We'll have some more examples with Tom Vial. With Tom Vial, he lost part of the race to Joe through the whoops, but you can see he's got his middle finger. Jet was just far superior than everybody through the whoops. It's the main reason as to why he is the king of Bercy, dethroning the guy in front of him at the moment, Ken Roxon. And here's another example. Here's him passing him, and what he's going to do is he's going to blitz the whoops, and on the exit, he's actually going to triple into the corner, which is just going to give him that bike length right in front of him not to mention he's on the inside of him but look kenny's gonna hit every whoop and jet is actually gonna roll over the second to last whoop just make a nice little downside to where he's gonna be able to break much different than the pass he did on his brother where he hit all the whoops and was breaking and then the rear end kicked up on him into an endo this was actually worked out better and in my opinion, was way more smooth and more technically sound, all the above. Just a beautiful pass. We'll watch it one more time. We got to give a couple other guys props. Aranda having super pole in the second night. Watch how fast he goes around this corner, entering the sand section. 
just freaking blitzing it. And that was how he got Super Bowl was his corner speed. Yes, does he not have the sustainability to be able to do that throughout the entire race of 8 to 12 minutes? No, he can't. But one lap, he was the fastest of Roxon, both the Lawrence brothers and Cooper Webb. Notice, he's jumping into this corner, lands beautifully, just accelerates. Now we got to talk about Kenny. Watch Kenny as he does the same thing, but watch what he does through the sand. Beautiful manual. Here, I'm going to put it in slow-mo so we can really see it. He's going to wheelie over the second double. Look at him. Landing, accelerating, gets that front wheel all the way over in a manual. Look at how far back he is to soak up so that that bike doesn't kick him any endos. Just an amazing soak up. That is honestly the best scrub of the night. And it's not even really a scrub because it's just a bicycle manual. It's a soak up rather really than a scrub. Just, I'm lost for words watching it. Wow. In my eyes, Kenny also holds the best line, best obstacle, best jump, best technique of Paris Supercross. Watch him as he seat bounces an entire dragon back section. All the way up and over. Here, I'll slow it down real quick. Here he's coming around. Seat bounce. Like I said, with the seat bounce, you're rolling those hips. Boom. Then he stands up. He's standing up behind him he's not standing up forward so he's not going to end up and he gets over all three of them whoa that could be so sketchy if he hits one of them without being on the throttle you didn't see him do it every lap you started seeing guys sort of seat bouncing missing one whoop and wheel tapping the rest of them but kenny was the only rider i saw really do it consistently where he was seat bouncing the entire thing and this was in super pole so you're going to break out your best techniques in Super Bowl. And truthfully, it's really a shame that Kenny didn't get on the podium because he took himself out in the last race of the night of the whole weekend. So race six, he crashes twice and that's what takes him off of the podium and he ends up fourth place overall. It was it was just it was a bummer to see because of how well he was riding and watch him on the start. Hunter is gonna kind of push him around but then Kenny's going to get him back by diving in really deep and just taking the line away. And that is something that we normally don't see from Kenny. Kenny normally shuts down and he decides to ride a safer race. But no, he's actually being more aggressive, which is something that we want to see from Kenny more and more of. And we're, we are seeing more and more. He just has to have a kickstart. Speaking of being aggressive, you got to be aggressive on your nutrition game, especially during and recovering from intense exercise so on race day you might want something like energy fuel light where you're doing less than an hour because you're doing maybe two motos if you're a weekend guy if you're doing more motos three to six definitely go with energy fuel it's got enough calories to keep you going per moto plus it's got a lactic acid buffer in it it's got all the salt and electrolytes that you need really pro tip the best flavor is watermelon pink lemonade is right up there make sure you shop coachrobstore.com if you've made it this far, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Watch Jet. What in the world is he doing? Right here on the start, I think he's smelling sniffing salts. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Looks to me like he's rubbing sniffing salts on his lips. What is that? I mean, I guess it could be chapstick because he could be chapped. But I really think it's probably sniffing salts. And last, the reason why Joe was so fast was his whoop speed and then also this rhythm section before the big catapult and the whoop section. We see Joe come in here double and then he's going to go triple, then quad in the corner, which is the 450 line. And he was the only 250 I saw make that line work consistently. And it was just minute faster every lap you know we're talking milliseconds and that stuff adds up especially with these caliber riders so until next time you guys know what's up keep it wfo for all